And then, then I just panicked. I ended up buying her an eed weeder. A feed weeder. Weed eater? She likes to garden. I cannot give my wife something that eats weeds. Why can't I stop sweating? Calm down, my man. Hello? Just think of a gift that reflects who she is as a mother. That's a problem. There is not a gift out there that would even come close to show her what an amazing mom she is. What kind of gift says... No, no! Something about nail polish? Got it. Got it? I got it! <laughs> he just shot me. Oh. Mom, have you seen my... Got it. How are you? Could you tell me more? <sighs> you got it. <laughs> Thanks for waiting. They let me go today. But it's okay. Right. God's got this. God has blessed me and the kids, this wonderful woman. How do you wrap that up and put a bow on it? She is the gift. <laughs> hey! I heard you loud and clear. You love and appreciate me? No bill required. What are you talking about? <laughs> you pocket called me. <laughs> Sweaty. Oh my no. <laughs> good with that whole drugstore thing we got going on, right? Ow. You still there? Um, CVS is down on the corner. <laughs> so if there's any of you men that need to get up and slip out during the next song, you could probably make it back here in time for the message. Moms, you truly are the gift. And I know that for many today is a wonderful, wonderful day, time of celebration and, and thanking mom. But we also recognize that for some today can be a tough day. You have a broken relationship with your mom or there's moms out there that have lost a child, um, some that long to be a mom. Others maybe like me who've lost their mom. My mom passed away uh, about 12 years ago, and today, May 8th, would have been my mom's 65th birthday. So today is a, a bittersweet day uh, for me as well. So um, it's a great day for many. It's a tough day for some. And let's keep that in mind now as we pray. So would you join me? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, moms are truly a gift from you. So today we pause you, pause to thank you for creating each mom with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self that each gives for her children. We thank you for the gift of time that they give to their families. We thank you for their flexibility, their tirelessness, their perseverance, and their devotion. We pray you give each mom strength Help her to see in every task, no matter how big or small, the eternal significance that you place on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical, world-changing events may be happening anonymously in her home. Help us to recognize the value she brings to each of our lives and help her to forgive those who undermine her significance. 
We ask you to be the daily bread and living water for moms when they are tired. May each mother find her rest in you. Today we pray for single moms who must lean on you for the fathering of her children. We pray for those whose relationship with their moms are broken. Only you can bring healing, forgiveness, and reconciliation. We pray for those who have not had children of their own, but have cared for and nurtured and guided others that you have brought into their lives. And we pray for those who have lost their moms. May their memories be extra special today, and may you bring peace into their lives that's beyond our understanding. And God, for all of us today, may our hearts overflow with gratitude to you, and may we live with a right and accurate perspective of self. You created us, you give us life and breath, and you formed our inward parts. You knitted us together in our mother's womb. And I praise you this morning because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and your ways. And may we be good stewards of the life that you have given to each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward. We're going to remain seated as we take the offering, but I invite you to join and sing uh, with Monica and the girls as we sing this next worship song together.
Happy Mother's Day. I'm uh, Brad Mullen, one of your Calvary Church pastors. And uh, moms, I think I know the kind of sermon that you'd like to hear about on Mother's Day. And I know because I had a mom. She's now with the Lord. Uh, I'm married to a mom. Uh, I'm married into a mom. I have a mother-in-law. She's 94 years old. She's in Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, I fathered a mom. My daughter Amy lives in Charleston, South Carolina, has a lovely husband and two great kids. Uh, and I think I know what you want. And uh, it's better than Mother's Day card, better than flowers, although uh, those are nice to receive, and I hope you receive some. Uh, you want to hear about the fam, about your kids, about their father, about the grandkids, about relationships, about togetherness, about, about family health. And in the language of this series that we're in now, family freedom. You want to hear from God's perspective how your family can be truly free. All that God intends your family to be. You want to know about it, and you want everybody in your family to know about it. And therefore, today, we're at freedom rule number five. Do you know what freedom rule number five is? Honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother, that it will go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving to you. Now, how in the world did we happen to hit it right, Pastor Bo, that today we talk about, actually, probably the whole series is positioned around this message being on this day. That's why we have uh, this scene behind us. It's to remind us of what? How beautiful Lancaster County is? Well, not really. It's to remind us that if we're going to navigate around Lancaster County, we need to have some roads that uh, are somewhat restrictive. Uh, if we have a car or a buggy or a bicycle or whatever we have, it's not easy to get around unless there were specific ways in which that could be done. And in this series, we're realizing that the laws that God gives are not to make us slaves. They came out of slavery. It's to make us free, it's to make us the people that he designed us to be. So hence, we have these signs, and we're beginning to collect a number of them. Remember at the beginning, we have to put God first. Put him first. If we don't do that, all the other rules don't make any sense at all. And then worship him only. Don't construct other gods in life. Worship God only. And then uphold God's reputation. He has a name to uphold. And you bear that name if you know him. And enter God's rest. How do we do that? We found out last week. We do it by placing ourselves by faith in Christ. Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's ultimately what he was talking about. And today, we have a new sign. Uh, it's the yield sign. Why? Well, because it's impossible to honor your father and your mother without recognizing that they are authorities that God has placed in your life. And one of the ways that that honoring takes place is to obey them, to respect them, to regard them with the proper esteem that you should, and you do that by yielding to their authority. Now, honor is one of these words that sounds a little archaic, doesn't it? A little medieval. 
you kind of think about uh, Sir Lancelot and Guinevere or, you know, court, the court uh, behavior and f a lot of formalism. But nevertheless, we use the word honor in our society a lot and falls from our lips a lot. And you'll see in the outline in your bulletin, I've listed a number of different ways in which we use the word honor and we're going to gather our thoughts around those ways. But uh, we're going to hear about bending and bowing and surrendering and submitting because it, it sounds counterintuitive. It sounds like, oh, that, that makes me enslaved. No, it makes you free. Today, folks think that to be free, what we have to do is keep up, open all the possibilities. We have to do whatever we want, whenever we want. Have you ever tried that? You know what it does in life? It makes you a slave to all of those things that you sought. To be really free is to say, God, you're the authority of my life. You've made me in order to yield ultimately to you. And I'm going to yield to you, and I'm going to yield to all of those people that you have in my life that you want me to yield to, to give way to. And when I do that, then I know that I'll be truly free. Now, if you'll count the number of signs behind me, you'll see that there are five. And there are ten freedom rules, right? So now we have five. So how does that work? We're at the halfway point. Now it looks like we're turning from God to people. Uh, is this one the, f the last of the first tablet? Because they came in two tablets, you know. Or is it the first and the second tablet. Well, I don't know, and none of us will ever know for sure, but I do know this, that this is the perfect hinge rule. That is, it's moving us from God to others. The first person in your life, in my life, that we ever met, our parents, and in essence, they were God to us, all-knowing, all-present, always present, all-powerful. Our first concept of God came to us through our parents. And the first way in which we learned what it's like to relate to another human being came as a result of relating to our parents. So we put them uh, together in this commandment, and I think there's a, a real hinge uh, uh, there. Well, you know, uh, when I was working this message up, about a week and a half ago, I had an opportunity to go to Philadelphia by myself. My wife was down in uh, South Carolina visiting our daughter and grandkids. And, and uh, so I went to Philadelphia, and I had tickets for the Philadelphia Orchestra. And I thought, well, I'll just bring my notes, uh, the notes that I have for uh, uh, the, the sermon with me. And I, I brought them, and I got my coffee, and I got a little egg salad sandwich. And I'm sitting there, and I open them up, and then I reach for my egg salad sandwich. Are we having problems moving those slides, by the way, fellows? There we go. Okay. And when I opened my box for the egg salad sandwich, I found this sticker. You know, it's the thing that kept the wrapper together. And I'm looking at my notes, and I'm thinking about yielding. And here's what it said on the sticker. Give in happily. And I thought to myself, boy, what a great definition for what it means to yield. It's just not giving in. You know, when I look at this, do you know where this is, by the way? How many of you think you know where this is? I see about five hands total going up. Pastor Bo, are you going to reveal this at some point? Okay, stay tuned. It will be revealed. It looks like a lot of other roads in Lancaster County, but I could see on this road a buggy or two, couldn't you? And I'm behind the buggy, and then there's another car coming in the other direction, and what am I to do? Well, some of us gun it, but the thing to do <laughs> is to yield, is to yield and to give way and to let that other person, not to do it ugh, grudgingly, but to do it happily. Happily, because we know it makes us free. This is what God had in mind for us when he made us. 
Well, who's the command for? You say it's for toddlers, it's for teens, it's for yo pros, you know, the young professionals. We have a group here called the yo pros. Middle age, older, it's for everyone. Because though everyone is not a parent, everyone has had parents, has had a mom and dad. And the command is for you. Honor your mother and your father. So let's talk a little bit more about honor before we get to mom and dad in particular. I have a riddle for you. What do you have only when you give it away? And what do you get only when others give it to you? And if you're looking at the next point on the outline of the bulletin, you have your answer. It's your honor. Your honor. And, and the question I have for you that God has for us today is, do you give it and do you want it? Do you give honor and do you want to be honorable? The word honor, the Hebrew word honor means heavy or weighty. You know, I think of the kind of the beatnik that says, hey, dude, that's heavy. It's like that. It's that th this is important. This is serious. This is meaningful. Give due weight in your relationships to people. When we honor God, we honor God because of who he is. You know, there's a hymn that we sometimes sing, all glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King. We give honor to God. We show him how much we esteem and respect and worship him. Perhaps you've been in a court of law. You're sitting there and all of a sudden the door opens, a person in a black robe walks in and you're told to stand. And the person in the black robe goes behind a desk that has a big seal in front of it and then you're told to sit. And everybody, when addressing that person behind that desk, says, Your Honor. Had you ever met the person before? Do you know anything about them? Just one thing. That's the judge. That person has a position that deserves respect. And we need to yield when that person is exercising whatever it is that their authority is. There are two ways in which honor can be understood. One of, it, one of them is giving honor, and the other is being honorable. And the Bible uses the word in both ways, giving honor and being honorable. One is for others, giving it to others, and one is for self, being honorable ourselves. Now, the command, which is the kind of way that the command is pointing to. Honor your father and mother. It's about giving honor. But giving honor and being honorable are related because if a person is giving honor, then they themselves are being honorable. Uh, that is, it's the right thing to do. So let's think just a little more about how these two fit together. First, about being honorable. I was a Boy Scout. Any Boy Scouts among us here? Uh, I was a Boy Scout, and uh, as a Boy Scout, it was kind of drummed into us that we had to uphold what it meant to be a Scout. And Scouts' honor was very important. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the Scout oath begins with the words, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. You know what the law is? A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. How do I know those things? Because I memorize them for today? No, because when I was a little twerpy kid of 13, and you see me on the right, that's my dad on the right, and that's me in the Scout uniform, my younger brother on the left, 
I don't know who those people are in the back. I've long forgotten, but I'm about 13. And then on the picture on the left, I think I'm about 17, right about when I was leaving the Scout. That's one of the, uh, the summer trips that we took with my friend Ron Strothkamp next to me. Ron Strothkamp, May the 8th, his birthday. How do I remember that? I don't know. I haven't seen him for 50 years. But I remember his birthday was May the 8th. It's amazing what you remember back then. And what it meant to be a scout was that, yes, we had a, an oath, a law, a uniform, a sign, a handshake, a troop, ranks, jamborees. We had the whole thing. But what was important is that we represented ourselves the way a scout would represent himself. Because of our identity, we needed to be honorable. And that's one way in which we can think of honor. You say, well, I wasn't a scout, so it doesn't apply to me. You're a child of God, right? And as a child of God, you represent him, and your honor is to serve him. But then you can think about the consequences of your actions being so dramatic and marvelous and wonderful in the way in which you can form that you might be deserving of the Medal of Honor. Now, there are very few Medals of Honor given out, and it's not a Scout Award. It's a government award. And it is for conspicuous gallantry, for people who risk their life and go above and beyond the call of duty. It's your, your character. The Book of Proverbs has a lot to say about honor in this regard. Uh, let me just mention a few of these verses, uh, and uh, we can think about them together. Proverbs 21, 21. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. You do the pursuit, and you'll find honor. The next verse. Proverbs 26, 1. Like snow in summer or rain in harvest. That doesn't happen. So honor is not fitting for a fool. But for a wise person, if you pursue wisdom, there's honor. And then this verse. One's pride will bring him love, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Obtaining honor. You can obtain honor and be honorable. I'm glad that there are honorable people in the world. We should all strive to be honorable, but this command says, Regardless of the honoree, honor your mother and your father, your father and your mother. It's something that we do because not that the person is honorable, but because it is in itself the right thing to do. Now, this is something that doesn't fit with our egalitarian culture. We're all kind of equal, and we all get what we deserve, but not according to God. We've got to think a different way. Even at one point in Scripture, Paul tells us slaves are to honor their masters, and he doesn't make a condition if they're good to you or something like that. So we have to take the attitude of, I'll do the honors. I will actually do the honors, and I will take the initiative to honor, beginning with parents, but as we'll see other people. And when we do that, uh, honoring requires honorable mention. Now, I know that term kind of sometimes means third place, four, fourth place, or nice try, or something like that. I'm kind of redeeming it in saying that honor without expressing honor is not honor at all. Honor needs to be expressed. You need to talk about it. You need to show it. I love it in Congress, you know, when they talk about the, the honorable gentle lady from Texas or something like that, and then they go on to skewer her. But nevertheless, they talk, uh, you know, in these kind of terms. We've got to say it. We've got to show it. And how do we show it? Well, I, I'm having a birthday this week. Talk about birthdays. Uh, we used to put on little hats. Uh, I'm probably going to have uh, a place to sit at the table. That's the place of honor. There's going to be some candles that come out in a cake, and I blow it out, and we, we celebrate. That's, that's the way that we honor conspicuously. Or we have parades, or we do a number of other things. You know, at Calvary Church, our elementary uh, age kids 
are being taught the importance of honor, and the theme is honor shines. And it does. It shines. You don't, you don't keep it in. You don't hide it. You, you let it out, and you let it shine. When we talk to, married, uh, to engage couples about being married, one of the things we ask them to do is to write a note of honor to their parents, to express what it has meant to them. The scripture wants us to mention our honor for people. For example, again in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs uh, 31, 28 and 31. It ends with this, the, the woman, the ideal woman. Sometimes Mother's Day sermons are preached right here about her. Her children rise up and call her blessed. They call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Let her works praise her where? In the gates. And where are the gates? That's outside of the house, in the public place, where everybody can hear about it. So when we honor, we honorably live so that humbly we will be able to receive the honor of others, but we are determined to happily honor others. And now we come to your honorable parents, your dad and mom, or is it your mom and dad? You know, Scripture goes both ways. In the book of Leviticus, verse uh, 3 of chapter 19, read this, every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths and so forth. It's really talking about this command. Notice anything? Well, mother comes first. And the rabbis all agree. That means that the honor to mother, honor to father, absolutely the same. And that was totally revolutionary in the ancient world. Totally revolutionary. Sometimes I lament the fact that we've got a Mother's Day and a Father's Day and not a Parent's Day. And the reason why is I don't want to get it over with in one shot. But sometimes I think we think that mothers and fathers are so totally different when the scripture says that they are a team, that they complement one another, that they cooperate one another. And there's a way in which we can really look at them as being one. Well, your honorable parents have introduced you to the honor system. And there is an honor system. God designed us individually, and it's marvelous, but God designed us as a human race and that's marvelous too. He said male and female together, children, family, go off, other families, more and more and more, and kind of in the creativity of development, there are all sorts of things, all sorts of organizations and ways that we can think about authority. The home is the first hospital, it's the first school, it's the first government, it's the first church. That's what the home is the system designer is God himself. God himself. That's what he tells us in Romans chapter 13, verse 7. Uh, excuse me, verse 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. You think, well, that has to do with government. Well, that's what he's talking about there, but he goes on. For there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. God appoints authorities, and the first ones that he's appointed in your life and mine are our parents. And the foundation for that system, therefore, is the home. It's the home. The home isn't determinative. It doesn't determine the way you'll turn out, but it is tremendously influential. It's formative. The way you relate and, and learn from your teacher, you learned at home. How you play for your coach, how you respect the police, how you work for your employer, how you yield to God. The foundation for that system is the home. And the rule 
for that system is honor, yielding. Augustine, that great uh, theologian of the fifth century, said, if anyone fails to honor his parents, is there anyone he will spare? And of course the answer is no. So there's a system, there are also rewards. Honor has its rewards. If you uh, are part of the Hilton Hotel uh, membership program, you have honors. It's called the Hilton Honors. I'm kind of a Motel 6 guy myself, but uh, nevertheless, uh, there are rewards. And the rewards are built in right there in the text uh, of, the, of the freedom rules. Exodus 20, verse 12. Let me show it to you again. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. That's the reward. As Paul says in Ephesians 6, this is the only one of these ten commands, rules, that has a promise attached to it. And this is the promise, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving to you. If you follow these rules, you'll avoid personal and societal crack-ups. And there'll be blessings that will attend, and that blessing is essentially life. It's, this isn't you obey your parents and you'll live a long life in terms of years. It's obvious that the, that the promise is for quality of life, not length uh, of life. That, that little word, just go back to that previous verse, that little word, that. Could you go back uh, to uh, Exodus 20? Yeah. That word, that. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be Just a quick word. The word that can be confusing, but it's so very important, not just here, but throughout the scripture. That. That. That's it. How's that? What do you think about that? You know, we use that all the time. The reason that, I want to direct your attention to that, is because every time you see that in Scripture, you should ask yourself the question, can I substitute the words so that, or in order that? Because if you can, you know what that means? That means God is telling you what the reason is, or the purpose is, or the goal is of what he's saying. It's a connector that is absolutely critical and appears in the most important text of Scripture, ones that you know. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that, so that, his love was so much that he gave his only son, his one and only son, that, the purpose of that, so that if you believe in him, you'll have eternal life. A little later in John, John 10.10, 10, I'm come, Jesus said, that, so that you will have life and have it more abundantly. And the whole purpose of John's gospel, John 20, uh, 30 and 31, many other signs Jesus did in the presence of his disciples, not written in his gospel, but these are written, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that believing you may have life in his name. Believe and live, believe and live, the commandment is, honor your father and mother that you will live. Why do we honor? Well, there are rewards, but we don't do it just for the rewards. Scripture says it's right, it pleases the Lord, it pleases parents, it's good for you. Uh, but it's also life-giving. Now, Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, 3 and 4. When I was a son with my father, tender, I was a young, young boy. The only one in the sight of my mother, I was an only child. He taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments, and live. Keep my commandments and be free. Know what life is all about. Well, there are rewards to honor, but there's the possibility of the loss of honor. And the way we lose honor is through sin. There's personal sin, selfish, sin, 
You know, babies kick and cry and they're cunning and uh, the way in which they get what they want, and so are we. We don't get rid of that as we grow older. But there's the personal kind of sin, but there's also the societal sin. There's the kind of sin that uh, has broken homes, uh, people who are leaders, people who have authority abusing that authority, you know, phony pastors and politicians on the take and abusive parents and things like that. That's going to really do quite a, a lot of damage in society. Or the psychological idea that if something's wrong with me, somebody must have done something to me. I'm not responsible myself. I've got to find somebody to blame. And then the media kind of reinforces it and makes it attractive. And churches, well, we're to be in the world but not of the world. That doesn't always happen. It's a serious thing. The scripture says it's so serious that it's deserving of the death penalty. And I know that that's not a popular idea today, but so are other sins like blasphemy. It's serious. Are you familiar with some of the lists of sin in scripture? And why are they listed? Well, they're listed as warnings. They're li listed as explanation. Let me show you one of them, Romans 1, 29 and 30, where Paul's talking about sin. He says, uh, you know, here's humanity ap apart from God. They're filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness, gossip, slanders, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evils, mm, blank, foolish, heartless, ruthless. What do you think the mm is? Let's look at it. Disobedient to parents. Can you imagine that that made the list? We think, oh, isn't they, aren't they cute? They're showing their independence, no big deal. The last days, what's going to happen in the last days, 2 Timothy 3? People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, reckless. You get the idea. What's the one that's missing? Disobedient to their parents. It's serious. We need to guard honor. We need to guard. How do we guard honor? Well, there's really only one way. We've got to look to the one who made the family who regulates the family, and that's God himself, the Lord. When Paul talks about this in Ephesians 6, I referred to this before, this is what he says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Fathers, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. In the Lord, of the Lord. That's the way it's done. That's the way you guard the family. It's the responsibility of the child. It's the responsibility of the parents. Let me take a moment and honor my parents. I want to show you a picture of Joe and Irene. My dad worked for Eastern Airlines for many years here. They're taking a trip, and, and that's my mom. And the I had freedom rules when I grew up. My dad was the freedom, my mom the rules. <laughs> and it was a nice combination. And it, it worked. And there they are. And they, they were a team. This picture is in my office at home, and there's another one. And I brought it in, and I asked around, should I show this in church? Is it okay to show this next one in church? And they thought about it, and they said, ooh, wow. Yeah, it's okay. And I think I will show it. But it's a warning. You want to turn your head away? You can turn your head away. No one will. I know that. Uh, here, here's the other picture I have. This was in 1944, and I know my parents that way throughout their life. Yeah, there's a romantic thing there, but there is a togetherness that is absolutely marvelous. Look, you, you, you don't have to be a counselor. I see Tom Cook right over here. I see George May over here. We have a number of counselors at Calvary Church. One of the best questions you could ask of yourself or somebody else when you're trying to understand what's going on, a question you can ask is, did your father love your mother? And did your mother love your father? 
the answer to that doesn't end it for you or do it all for you, but it can give you great insight into who you are. Well, let's take the honor roll. This is graduation season, and we can call the honor roll. Who should be on that honor roll? First, uh, you need a ring of honor. Dallas Cowboys started this in 75. They've got the people that are, they're great stars. Not too many lately, but you know, a long time ago they had them. And uh, they're around there in the stadium and other, other teams started to do it too. Uh, people that deserve to be there, that you find honorable, they're examples to you. You want to follow them. Your parents need to be on that list, but a lot of other people too. Okay? How about your guests of honor? How do you treat them? How many places do you set up for your guests of honor? Let me uh, read a verse to you that's pretty convicting. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. Honor everyone. By virtue of the fact you're made in the image of God, we're to honor everyone. And in the scripture, it talks about the poor, the widows, the elderly, love our enemies. More than that, Romans 12, verse 10. Romans 12, verse 10, outdo one another in showing honor. I mean, we should be stumbling all over oneself trying to honor each other, and if that was happening, we'd be closer to the way God wants the family and the church and all other human institutions. Is your heart honor bound? Is this style for a lifetime? Or you just do it on important days like today? Jesus honored his parents from beginning to end. First thing we read about him is a little, maybe even preteen. Yes, he was about his father's business, but he subjected himself to his parents. That's what the text said. And right at the end, one of the last things he did was he transferred care over to John. He did what he was supposed to do with respect to this commandment. So therefore, my question to you is, and to me, Will you do the honorable thing? Am I going to do the honorable thing? You know, the honorable thing used to be when people were living together as if they were married before they were married. Someone would say, well, the honorable thing for you to do is to get married. And I know that's even become fuzzier today, but uh, God wants us to do the honorable thing. You say, well, that's uh, pretty hard because I've blown it. If you failed, and by the way, everybody has failed, but if you failed in ways that you can identify, you can repent, and you can change, and you can start honoring. Or, if you've been hurt, if you've been hurt, what can happen to you is that you can forgive. I know it's hard. It's very, very hard, but that's the only way out. And you have some initiating to do there. I'm going to ask our musicians to come out because uh, we're at the end of the message, but we're not at the end of our responsibility. I know there's a lot of guilt here. There's a lot of concern as to how to make things right again. It can't happen unless we do some repenting, some repairing, and a whole lot of respecting, a whole lot of honoring, being honorable and honoring others. We can't change our ancestry. You know, we have a lot of interest in our ancestry. Ancestry Ancestry.com, you know, let's find out. We can do a whole lot to change our descendants. Say, well, I don't have kids. Well, you're a part of the family of God. We all have ways in which we can influence the next generation. And paramount among, among them, according to Freedom rule number five is to yield. That sign has gone bye-bye, but don't let it go bye-bye in your life. Is to yield, is to yield and to honor. And in so doing, we honor God. Let's stand, let's sing, let's tell God how much we want to follow through on this freedom rule.
majesty we proclaim that your name is exalted for you reign magnificently rule victoriously and your power is thrown
Thank you, Pastor John and all of our music team today. That hit the right note, didn't it, those songs? Mothers, we honor you today, but we look at you and beyond you to the Lord who we honor. Thank you for teaching us about him, showing us more and more about him. If uh, this is your first time at Calvary or uh, you'd like to say hello to some of the pastors here because uh, you're uh, pretty new at Calvary, we have that welcome gathering out the doors to the right. Uh, there's a room marked. Please come 10 minutes, say hi. And uh, there is lunch today if you happen to be here toward uh, the end of the second service. We'd invite you to stay. It might make your Mother's Day a little bit easier, but many of you have other Mother's Day plans, and we understand. God bless you all. Thank you. And this is a day to honor mothers. Amen.
fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Here by thy grace Good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fall of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Precious blood. From sinning, I shall see thy lovely face, clothed then in blood washed linen. How I'll sing thy sovereign grace! Come, my Lord, no longer tarry, take my ransom soul away. Send thy name. Now to carry me to realms of endless day Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I am constrained to be Let thy goodness, like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to Thee Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I love Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it Seal it for Thy courts above Here's my heart, oh Take and seal it, seal it for thy courts Your love will 